لا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يصرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلا وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كوف يكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم جماعت المسلمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله جماعة مبارك to each and everyone we are just waiting for our guest speaker to arrive he will be here any minute that is Hazrat of Molina Fuzail Sufi from Durban he is on his way he will be here any minute meanwhile because of the sacredness of Jumu'ah the beautiful day of Jumu'ah and also the blessed month of Rabbil Awal, kindly join me in a short salawat in praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الصبح بدا من طلعتي والليل دجا من وفرتي اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا أزكى النسب على الحسب كل العرب في خدمته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا جبريل أتى ليلة أسرى والرب دعا لحضرته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا فمحمدنا هو سيدنا فالعز لنا لاجابته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم I think in order for us to save some time, let me do the announcements while waiting for the speaker to come forward. First and foremost, we have been asked to make dua for Khalil Dalwai, who passed on on Tuesday, his janaza already took place. May Almighty Allah grant him Jannah to Firdaus. Also dua for Haji Ibrahim Tawfa, the brother of Haji Abdurrahman Tawfa and Sheikh Abdul Karim Tawfa and his janaza, Haji Ibrahim Tawfa's janaza will take place today. May Allah put sabr in the hearts of the families and grant the deceased Jannah to Firdaus. Also, we've been asked to make dua shifa for Muhammad Aziruddin Wahab from Lodium. May Allah grant him shifa with afia, ameen. Also, one of our foremost youth, Brother Salman Ahmed, asked me to announce with regard to the Habibia Archery Club, they will be having the annual charity week, a shoot-a-thon with a bow and arrow, and that will be to raise funds 
for the orphans across the world. Their aim is to raise 150,000 rand, inshallah, for that particular event. We ask the community to kindly support. There will be food stalls and various other activities for children also. And then, of course, the Irshad Institute will be having the open day, and Sheikh Nadir Hendricks has asked me to announce for everyone who's interested, they will have the open day this Saturday, that is tomorrow, the 7th of October, here in the auditorium at Masjid Al-Quds. And it will start at 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. They specialize in mathematics, tuition, and workshops, and they give their students a strong foundation in tra traditional Islamic sciences and facing the challenges of the advancing modern world. That is the Irshad Institute, inshallah. Also, I've been asked to make dua for Mr. Ajmuddin Obari, who used to be one of our fathers in the community and here at the masjid. He passed away last week and his janaza was already taking place. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant sabr and contentment in the hearts of the families and may Allah grant the deceased Jannatul Firdaus. Amin. Also, I've been asked to make an uh, announcement with regard to Make a Difference campaign. We know many people have been affected with the recent floods here in the Western Cape, especially our community in Makassa, in Fori Out, and the committee members have come together of the masjid to assist the community. And if anyone is interested in giving assistance, speak to any member of the committee of the masjid in order to assist the affected families, inshallah. And definitely last but not least, Alhamdulillah, once a very well-known and hard-working and esteemed organization, the Islamic Relief, they have some visitors here from Canada under the leadership of Dr. Tariq and the entourage from Canada. Dr. Tariq and the people from Canada, we welcome you to South Africa, to Cape Town, and we wish you well in serving the global ummah. May Allah crown your efforts with great success. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Can anyone give me an indication if uh, our guest speaker Molana Fuzail arrived already. Anyone? He phoned a few minutes ago to say he's nearly here. So if anyone can give me some indication. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I will just say some words of the cuff while we're waiting for our guest speaker. And it's not easy to speak off the cuff because I don't like to underestimate and disrespect my community and my congregation. I always feel that we need to speak prepared with a prepared message, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, I can just uh, remind you of the auspicious occasion that we are in, the auspicious time period of the month of Rabbil Awal, in which Muslims in the millions throughout the world are commemorating the praises of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And not only his birth, but also his prophetic mission as Rahmatul Alameen to an ailing world. The world once again is in need of guidance. We can see by the condition of the world that the world is in an ailing state. Similar to that time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made his appearance to this world. When the world sunk into the de deepest abyss of animalism. So much so that the great historian George Bernard Shaw, he said that man fell down into the abyss of animalism that you could hardly distinguish between the human brute and the animal. The only difference was that man could talk. Man has the power of speech. But in lifestyle and interaction towards one another, people lived like animals. No respect for women. No respect for baby girls that were born who were buried alive. 
no respect for the rights of one another. And in this climate, Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this prophetic appearance to this world and he brought the light of civilization. It was this light of civilization that our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought that the Muslim community, our Muslim forefathers, were foremost in every science, be it the science of embryology, the science of embryology and every other science of to do with the eyes, to do with the ears, to do with the well-being of humanity. Our Muslims were in the forefront. I'm just asking, where are the Muslims today when the world needs us? For new inventions, new inventions which are needed, we have become so embroiled in infighting, we have become so indulged in ill infighting, assassinating the character of each other, that there's really no progress. We are more concentrated on the differences in fiqh and more concentrated on declaring each other kafir and munafik. I'm asking with the greatest of love, the greatest of concern, I'm asking my Muslim brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his main mission as rahmatan lil alameen was to ensure that not a single human being should enter the fire of hell. He cried to Allah, his last words was, Ummati, Ummati, with every effort he made, he tried to bring people into the fold of Islam. Today, we look for the minutest detail and justification to declare each other kafir and kick each other out of the fold of Islam. I'm asking you, please, with the greatest of love and respect, are we acting like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or unlike him? Where is that love that we claim for him? Where is that love that we claim for him? And so let us use this month of Mawlud, this month of Rabbil Awal, not to character assassinate each other, not to bring each other down, not to insult and mock at each other, and as I said, the night of Mawlud also, those who wish to make Mawlud, Alhamdulillah. Those who don't wish to, Alhamdulillah. We are still one Ummah, one global dynamic Muslim Ummah, and this ailing world needs this Ummah. Alhamdulillah, our guest is stepping in, the Honorable Hafiz. Maulana Fuzail Sufi, Hafidahullah, all the way from Durban, Sharif, mashallah. I hope he brought some bunny chows with for us, inshallah, that we will enjoy after Jummah. Without further ado, Faliyat Fadgal Mashkura, Ya Fadilat Sheikh. Ahlan wa sahlan. نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم رسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحنين الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل وسلم على سيرنا محمد وعلى آل سيرنا محمد كما تحب وترضى بأن تسل عليه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي الذي يجدونه مكتوبا 
عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل يأمرهم بالمعروف وينهاهم عن المنكر ويحل لهم الطيبات ويحرم عليهم الخبائث ويضع عنهم إسرهم والأغلال التي كانت عليهم سرق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Most respected ulama, my respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and through the benedictions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we have gathered here on Yawm al-Jum'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His infinite mercy, accept our presence here this afternoon, and may He accept whatever we do sincerely for His sake, inshallah ta'ala. Apologies for the late arrival, uh, not my fault. We are in the blessed month of Rabiul Awwal. And undoubtedly, there is no other more beautiful month to celebrate the divine prophetic leadership that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam with than the blessed month of Rabiul Awwal. Because according to the most historical sources from the Sahih Ahadith and from the books of Sirah, it was on Friday the 12th of Rabiul Awwal, which corresponded to last week, that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam made his triumphant entry into what was known as Yathrib. And the moment the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam entered, it became al Madinatul Munawwara, the most illuminated city. What is significant about the arrival of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam into al Madinatul Munawwara on Friday, the 12th of Rabiul Awwal, is that not only did it herald the Hijra, which is now our calendar, but it also was the critical point when the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam was inaugurated officially as the first and ultimately the final president of the state of Islam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu entered al madinah al Munawwara as the de facto leader of the state of al madinah And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's inauguration as the eternal president of Islam in the first state of Islam, which is al madinah al Munawwara, was met with such jubilation, with such joy, that the hadiths of Sahih Bukhari and Muslim state that for Sa'id al-Rijal wa nisa that the women and the men and the women climbed up onto the rooftops of their homes and the servants lined the streets and as the Holy Prophet was, was walking through and or he was on his qaswa on his camel as the Holy Prophet happened to meander through the gullies of al Madina to Munawwara the Prophet of Allah was greeted with slogans by the people of Muhammad of, of Medina of Ya Muhammad Ya Rasulullah Ya Muhammad Ya Rasulullah this was the slogan of the people of Medina upon the entry of the Messenger of Allah it's Friday and why it is significant is that it was the first Friday in the history of Islam that the practically inaugurated president of Islam is going to deliver his presidential address. And the presidential address is taking place with the first official Juma in the history of Islam. And the first official khutbah as a free member and as a person able to have freedom of speech and freedom of religion in al madinatul Munawwara. This is why the 12th of Rabiul Awwal and the entry of the Holy Prophet into al madinatul Munawwara was absolutely unique. And the Prophet of Allah performed the first Jummah. He was greeted with jubilation by children, young girls, who, who ran behind the Prophet of Allah and they were singing with their dafs Nahnu jiwarim min banin najjar Ya habbada muhammadu min jar She said we are the young girls of the banu najjar How fortunate we are Rasulullah is our neighbor The Abyssinians from Africa danced around the messenger of Allah How we would call it in our language Toi toi around the messenger of Allah to, you know, to, to welcome him into the city of al madinah al Munawwara. Then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu delivered his inaugural khutbah and inaugural address which we are celebrating today as Yawmul Jumu'ah. There is no greater introduction to the concept of leadership than when we celebrate the arrival of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Friday the 12th of Rabiul Awwal into al madinah al Munawwara. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has described the leadership of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is a paradigm of leadership that is unique to humanity. 
Allah speaks about the messenger of Allah sallallahu and he says alladhina yattabi'una rasulan nabiyyal ummi he is the rasul he is the messenger he is the universal messenger an nabi al ummi alladhina yajidunahu maktuban 'indahum fi at-Torah wal Injil now Allah describes his leadership style ya'muruhum bil ma'ruf the messenger of Allah bids you to good meaning he is a social leader Ma'roof and Urf means custom. He, he, he's a person who incorporates the custom, the culture, geography, right? The, the, the mindset of the people. Ya'muruna bil ma'roof. He's a social leader. Ya'muruhum bil ma'roof wa yanhaahum anil munkar. And he's a moral leader. Wa yuhillu lahum al-tayyibat wa yuharrimu alayhim al He's a legislator. He's a lawmaker, right? He decrees for you what is permissible from the best that is there. And he makes impermissible and forbidden for you that which is impure and evil. And he removes all those intellectual and political and jurisprudential fetters that you had people, you know, in chains, literally, people whose minds had not been freed, people who were engaged in jurisprudential hair splitting. And Rasulullah came to make life easy. Therefore, he's a social leader, he's a legislator, he's a moral leader, he's an ethical leader. And his leadership style is what we call charismatic leadership. Quran says about him, It is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O Messenger of Allah, that you are lenient and you are gentle towards people. Look at his leadership style, he's gentle towards people. Had you been fadhan, rough, hard-hearted, harsh, an autocratic leader. People would have, would have dispersed away from you. They would have run away from you. But the Prophet of Allah is a charismatic leader. He wins people over. He's soft-hearted. He's gentle. He's loving. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you his charismatic leadership style. Fa'fu anhum. Pardon them. Overlook their faults. Be kind and loving towards him. Wastaghfir lahum. And be a spiritual leader. Seek forgiveness on their behalf in the court of Allah. Washawiruhum fil amr. And consult with them in terms of their worldly, political, social affairs. You are a, you are a democratic leader. You lead through consultation. You have a shura community, a, a, a committee. You have a council. Washawiruhum fil amr. However, in terms of, of your leadership style, for either azamta, O Messenger of Allah. But when you have made a firm decision and you know as a leader you have to make some very tough and strong decisions, then the Rasul Allah tells the Prophet of Azamta, Allah, then you trust in Allah because Allah loves those who place trust in Him. These are some of the leadership qualities of Rasulullah is spoken about and revered about in the Holy Quran. And his leadership is a unique leadership in the sense that not only is he a political leader, a social leader, or a moral leader to lead society, but the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the leadership is transcendent. It is divinely appointed. He is there. What you him? He is there to be an inspirational leader, right, to purify you. So he is involved in the reformation of people and ultimately transformation of people. What you allimuhumul kitab is for your reformation. What you him is for your transformation, your spiritual tazkia. What you allimuhumul kitab wal hikma and he's inspirational as a leader. Wa in kanu min qablu lafi dalalim mubin. But the greatest aspect of leadership of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he left behind as his legacy is what we call today, as far as the scholars of, of, of sciences are concerned, they call it transformational leadership. What is it? Transformational leadership. What is transformational leadership? Transformational leadership is that transformation, is that, is that methodology that was employed by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to empower every member of his ummah to plant the seeds of leadership within themselves and take on responsibility, accountability, and to create an ethos of integrity. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam's model in terms of this is something absolutely unique. 
And this is where the ummah needs to take this legacy and apply it. Generally, we have a perception of leadership that it is a vertical hierarchy. You know, you start off at the bottom and you go to the top. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam created a different hierarchy. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam's hierarchy was this way. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Kullukum ra. He said, every one of you is a shepherd. Every one of you is a shepherd. Whether it is the political leader, he is responsible for his flock. So he spoke about the political pe people in politics, in bureaucracy, in society. People responsible for the establishment of the social order. He said, every one of you is a shepherd and you will be accountable for your flock. And then the Holy Prophet took it one step down and he brought it to the family. And he said, the father and the, the, the husband is the head of the family. And he will be questioned and he will be held accountable regarding his family. And then the Holy Prophet took it another step further. And he said, and the wife is responsible for the home and for the, her children. And she will be accountable for the home of her husband and for her children. And in, an, in, in another narration of the same hadith in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet of Allah brought it down to the lowest strata of society. He said, even if you are a slave, you are a shepherd to your master's property. You see? He didn't want to create vertical hierarchy. He said, even if you are a slave, you have a responsibility. You have a duty. You have a, a degree of accountability. And what did he do? In this way here, the Holy Prophet وسلم, opened up leadership from the most basic and most fundamental strata of society, when people are in issues of slavery and servitude, to homes and to communities and to global leadership. But where did he start off from? He started off at grassroots level. And you know what is interesting? We haven't applied one very fundamental aspect of leadership in the sense that leadership doesn't start off, right? When you turn 21 or 22 and you become an adult, the Holy Prophet sowed the seeds of leadership in children. Save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. That includes everybody. And he said, Kullukum ra. He said, every one of you is a shepherd. He didn't say, no, only adults are shepherds. No. And you know, it's a simple example. And I want parents to start applying this. The Holy Prophet وسلم, himself was a shepherd by the age of four. He was a shepherd by the age of four. Do you know what it takes to be a shepherd? You got to guide the sheep. You've got to watch over them. You've got to be vigilant over them. You've got to take, you know, you've got to be concerned about their welfare. You've got to ensure that they are fed. You've got to spend time with them. Right? You've got to bring them back home. You've got to guide them. You've got to worry about them. Now imagine if we sow these seeds of leadership in our children by firstly getting them into contact with nature in a highly digitized world. Instead of sitting there and, you know, uh, just waiting for the next notification from TikTok, Right? If they had a little pet at home that they could take care of, right, they would be worried about whether the pet has eaten. They would be responsible for ensuring that the pet is clean. They would be uh, responsible for ensuring that the cat or the, your dog or whatever it is, is being taken well care of. And you, assume, you create that responsibility in them. You create that concern in them. You create that love in them. You'll see how it transforms children. And this starts off when? By the age of three or four. And this was the sunnah of every Nabi. The Prophet of Allah said there isn't a single Nabi that wasn't a shepherd. Because it taught them fundamental, critical skills in terms of leadership. And this is where the transformation comes. And it's interesting that in families that have grown up with this transformative leadership, which is not vertical but horizontal, a child will take on the responsibility of ensuring that maybe his parent may be you know, remiss in terms of performing salah. The child will tell the father, Dad, let's go for salah. Or the, the little baby will tell the mommy, Mommy, we need to re read our salah to asr. This is what the Prophet taught in his own home. And this is where leadership commences from. And this is what is absolutely transformative of the Islamic concept of leadership. The second important aspect of transformative leadership was the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi created a unique paradigm in terms of real leadership, in terms of politics and society. If you look at the history of Islam, you will see at the conquest of Makkah, 
Makkah was the hub, the financial hub of the entire Arabia. It was where the Kaaba was. When the Holy Prophet ﷺ conquered Makkah, do you know who he appointed as the governor of Makkah? He appointed a 20-year-old young man. This is literally the financial capital, right? And literally the, the heart and soul, not only of the Muslim world, but of the Arab world in the, term, in term, in the era of Jahiliyyah. He, 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 he appointed a 20-year-old man, Uttar bin Usaid. Interestingly, do you know who he was? He was the son-in-law of Abu Jahal. He accepted Islam during the conquest of Makkah. So he hadn't been trained by the Holy Prophet ﷺ for a lengthy period of time. But the Holy Prophet ﷺ saw in him qualities that were so remarkable, that he was so wise beyond his age, that he was appointed as a 20-year-old young man to be the governor of the state of Makkah. And he retained this position, even in the era of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and some said up to the era of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet of Allah fixed a salary for him of one dirham. One dirham. That's not a lot of money. But the governor, when he was appointed by the Messenger of Allah with the salary, stood up and he declared, I have been appointed by the Messenger of Allah as a governor, and I have been given a salary of one dirham. Therefore, I need nothing from the people. I, j I am just here to serve you. Who teaches this to a 20-year-old to govern a city like Makkah? The Prophet of Allah وسلم, before he entered al Madinatul Munawwara, had a young man, one of, my, one of my greatest heroes, Mus'ab bin Umayr, man who, a young man, he was in his teens, came from the wealthiest of families. If he wore one outfit, you know, today in, in this age of branding and, you know, brand names and living the lifestyle and whatever it is, he lived the life. If he wore one outfit for the day, he never repeated his outfit. But when the beauty of Islam entered into his heart, he was willing to give up everything for the sake of Islam. He was imprisoned by his parents. He escaped and he chose a life of poverty and pre preferred to be in the company of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to then enjoy the luxury that his parents in Makkah gave him. The Prophet of Allah saw him in al Madinatul Munawwara one day and he had barely a piece of cloth just to cover his body and it was you know, stitched with a piece of a thorn that he closed up to just cover his nakedness and the Prophet of Allah وسلم, saw him and he wept. They said, Ya Rasul, why do you weep? He said, I know the condition of Musa bin Umayr and the lifestyle that he lived. And he gave this all up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet of Allah appointed him, Mus'ab bin Umayr, as the ambassador to the city of Al-Madinatul Munawwara before the Prophet of Allah sallam, entered Madinatul Munawwara. And he was tasked by the Prophet of Allah in the presence of Umar ibn Khattab, Abu Bakr Siddiq, all senior Sahaba from Makkah, seniors who had spent so much of time with the Prophet of Allah. A teenager is appointed by the Messenger of Allah to become his ambassador in al Madinatul Munawwara. And he was so efficient at doing what he did that by the time the Messenger of Allah وسلم, entered al Madinatul Munawwara on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal, there wasn't a single house that didn't have a single Muslim at the very least in al Madinatul Munawwara. That was the da'wah activity of Mus'ab bin Umayr. And he was martyred obviously in Uhud. Then you have Sayyidina Zayd bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He wasn't given permission to fight in the battle of Badr. He was only 13 years old. 13 years old. But historians state the Holy Prophet وسلم, nurtured his potential to such a degree that the Prophet of Allah وسلم, made him learn Syriac and Hebrew. And he learned and he became proficient in these two languages that, that are not his mother tongue in up to plus, plus minus 17 days. 17 days he became proficient in Syriac and Hebrew and thereafter any communication that needed to be done in terms of dealing with people who spoke in Syriac and Hebrew it became his responsibility he would write the letters of the Holy Messenger of Allah وسلم, to these people in those respective languages and thereafter the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was instructed to he was then chosen later on to compile the entire Quran this is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is his leadership. We need to apply this leadership in our communities today. We need to get our children, as young as they may be, and, 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 you know, and, and transform them and mold them in such a way that they will be inspired by the prophetic methodology of leadership. 
Get them into our masajid. If they have beautiful voices, encourage them to recite nashids and qasaid. Let them lead the dhikr. Let them lead the dhikr. Involve them in the process of, of having a, you know, a, a celebration of mawlid, where they will lead the entire process. In our homes, get them to, 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 you know, to take the, the, the initiative in terms of salah, in terms of tilawah of Quran. Get them, teach them in an age when everybody's becoming you know, obsessed with this and addicted to te technology. Get them to go out there and work in the gardens. Get them to, to, to play with the soil. Get them to tend to, to plants, to tend to little pets. And you will see a transformation in the way they think. You will see them developing skills that the Holy Prophet وسلم, encouraged in his era and his society. It is this type of leadership that we require. Because going forward, it will be those very people who will become leaders in terms of politics, in terms of social upliftment, in terms of social justice. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, model was based on one thing and one thing only. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Today, politics, that's where leadership is, you know, focused on right now. Politics is regarded as the dirtiest game to be in. The Holy Prophet ﷺ came and purified politics. He purified politics, not even sanitized it, he purified it. And he created a model of political leadership that is still second to none. But alas, the Muslim Ummah hasn't been able to follow that sunnah. We need to go to the macro sunnah. We, de we deal with the micro sunnah of the beards and our turbans, alhamdulillah. But the macro sunnah, in terms of economic leadership, by cancelling riba, closing up the capitalist system, and re-establishing a new economy and a new financial system, was his economic leadership. That's how he established it. Political leadership was about integrity, accountability, responsibility. This was his leadership. Family leadership, he appointed in such a way that you had horizontal, like I had mentioned, where a child, a mother and a father, all of them are equally responsible in their homes. Can you imagine how transformative and how revolutionary that will be? Unfortunately, because of time, and because I was also late, right, I can't um, you know, uh, elaborate on the matter, inshallah. Some other time, inshallah, I hope that we start applying this with our kids. In so in, really, instead of buying them a phone or whatever it is, or giving them an iPad in the hand, buy them a little, uh, um, you know, a little pet and let them take care of the pet. I've seen the effects of it. Really, I've seen the effects of it. The Prophet of Allah, and I'll conclude with this, you know, there's a, there's a statement of the Prophet of Allah that Anas bin Malik had a little, Anas bin Malik was his personal attendant. And he was a young boy, eight, nine years of age. Right? And he had another brother, his name was Umair. Right? And he had a little sparrow, a little bird that he used to take care of. Right? And the sparrow passed away. When the Prophet of Allah came into the home, he noticed that Umair was very, very saddened. The Holy Prophet just looked at him and he said, Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'ala nuhair? He said, Oh Aba Umair, what happened to your little sparrow? One statement. He consoled the child, he consoled the young boy. But do you know that one statement of the Prophet of Allah, scholars took out 40 to 50 thick rulings, rulings of jurisprudence from that one statement. Some scholars went up to from 45 to 90 rulings came out from that one statement of the Messenger of Allah. Amongst them that you can keep a little pet. You must take care of him. You must console children. Right? You, must, you must use words that are, you know, that the children will understand which, you know, like that, he went on. One statement of the Prophet of Allah. This was where his transformation was. Allah infused our hearts with the, with the, with the love of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah infused us and enable us to follow the sunnah of leadership. And may we move from the micro sunnah to the macro sunnah because the ummah right now in a globalized village needs, needs the application on a global level of the macro sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And every one of us has to become a shepherd to his or her flock. Allah grant us the tawfiq and hidayah wa ma'alayna ila al Takbir, Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. MashaAllah, powerful, stirring nasiha from Hafiz Maulana Fuzail Sufi. Damat barakatu, jazakallah khair, shukran, and paitra makasi for a very powerful lecture indeed. May Allah grant us understanding. Amen. Our speaker for next week in the theme of our month of Rabiul Awal will be the Honorable Sheikh Saadullah Khan. And last but not least, I want to once again extend a sincere and a hearty welcome 
to Dr. Tariq and his entourage from Canada, who are the guests of the Islamic Relief. May Allah bless and grant success to your mission. Amen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. May I humbly request everyone to stand. There's a whole lot of people that wants to come in the masjid, and there's quite a few gaps. Can I humbly ask you to kindly stand, step forward, and wherever you see a space in front of you, that space is rightfully yours.
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اذا الاسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاه حيا على الصلاه حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الاخ الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي فضل سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم على العالمين جميعا واقامه يوم القيامه للمذنبين شفيعا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله الذي ارسله الله تعالى بشيرا ونذيرا اما بعد فيا ايها المؤمنون رحمنا ورحمكم الله تعالى اوصيكم واياي بتقوى الله الله عز وجل في السر والعلان فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في شانه في في شانه الرسول النبي الامي الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراه والانجيل قال الله عز وجل يامرهم بالمعروف وينهاهم عن المنكر ويحل لهم الطيبات ويحرم عليهم الخبائث ويضع عنهم اسرهم والاغلال التي كانت عليهم فالذين امنوا به وعزروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي انزل معه اولئك هم المفلحون وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في شأن خلقه ورأفته بقوله سبحانه وتعالى فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لم فض من حولك فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الأمر فإذا عزمت فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم كلكم راع وكل وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام وقال عليه الصلاه والسلام يسروا ولا تعسروا وبشروا ولا تنفروا صدق رسول الله العظيم نسال الله نسال الله العظيم المول الكريم ان يتداركنا برحمته ويميتنا مسلمين ويغفر لنا اجمعين برحمته هو ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين اذ بعث فيهم رسولا من انفسهم يتلو عليهم اياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمه وان كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله واستغفر الله واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين فاستغفروا انه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوانم ودفد وبارك بجلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك واشرف عبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابه اجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد افضل صلاه واتك عدد معلوماتك وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اللهم ارحم ابا بكر التقي وعمر النقي وعثمان الزكي وعلي الوفي اسد الله المرتضى وفاطمه الزهراء وخديجه الكبرى وعائشه الصديقه العليا والحسن الرضا والحسين الشهيد المجتبى والشهداء الكربلاء والسعد والسعيده وطلحه والزبير وعبد الرحمن بن عوف وعباء بن بن الجراح وعلى تمام العشره المبشره صلاه وسلام دائمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين 
الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين واخذوا الكفرة والمترعة والمشركين اللهم انصر من نصر دين سيدنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم واخذوا من خذ الذين سيدنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم الأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا قاضي الحاجات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي عيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وعز وجل وأهم وأتم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي الله الصلاة حي الله الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو اعتدلوا سووا شفوكم رحمكم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده 
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله سفر الله سفر الله سفر الله العظيم هو التواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وأتوب إليه ونسألك توبة ومغفرة إنه هو التواب الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما تحب ترضى بأن تسلي عليه اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعالى أنت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد اللهم إنا نسألك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات وحب المساكين وأن تغفر لنا وترحمنا وإذا أردت بعبادك فتنة فتوفنا غير مفتونين ونسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا لا يرتد ونعيما لا ينفد ومرافقة محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم في جنة الخلد قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما تحب ترضى بأن تسلي عليه سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين